Hello to all, welcome to the channel Cloud Knowledge. Today in this video, we'll study about starting a larger debug session or creation of a custom debug session. So we know that when we design a mapping data flows, it has a default Azure integration runtime session. On the mapping data flows in ADF, we work it against a Azure Databricks Spark cluster. This cluster you, you would have seen Let's go to the pipeline here. So if we go to any, let's say, pipeline, and at the top, we have this debug option. Okay. Why is this debug option? Because it trigger test runs of the current pipeline without publishing your changes to the service. Without publishing, if you want to perform a test run, you can use this option. And if you click over it, it at the right side, you can see that the integration runtime is set as auto-resolving integration runtime, which is there whenever a data factory instance is created, then the region, compute size, and debug time to live. So the debug time to live is by default one hour, okay? And if you hover over it, this is the amount of time that the IR will wait after your last data preview before automatically shutting down your debug cluster. To avoid billing for the entire detail, you can shut down the debug session when you are finished working. So by default, it will stay alive for 60 minutes. In case you are finished with your data preview and the data flow activity debugging, you can then turn it off manually too. So let's click OK. So you can see getting the cluster ready. So this is what is written here that the Databricks Spark cluster is created in the background for the data flows in ADF. And the size of the cluster is configurable via the Azure integration runtime. If you do not configure custom Azure integration runtime, then it will use the default IR. The default IR is already there. So you can see here the data flow debug option, that is the cluster is ready. Now we can debug this pipeline. So if we go inside the data flow, here also the data flow debug option is shown enabled. Here you can see the debug settings also. Okay. So the debug settings are present here in the data flow debug IR. If we go back here. The cluster is ready, we can execute it. And if we do not cus uh, configure a custom Azure IR, it will take the default IR and the default IR has a very small cluster size. Okay, It is by default four cores of a single worker node and four cores of a single driver node. So worker node is four and driver nodes are four. In most cases, while debugging and using data preview, it should be fine. So for most of the cases, it works fine. But when we start exploring our data with column statistics, or when we increase the sampling size in debug settings, then we may find that you have exceeded the capacity on the small default cluster of four cores. Then we need to create a large custom cluster. Okay, that this Databricks bar cluster, which is by default created here, we need to then create a large custom cluster. Now, how we can create this larger cluster? So let's go back here. So we'll go back to the data factory and here, in the left panel, we'll select Manage tab. And from the Manage tab, we can see here the connections. Okay, under the connections, we'll go to the integration runtime. In the integration runtime, by default, we have the auto-resolving integration runtime. So integration runtime is the compute infrastructure, okay, which is required for any data flow to execute. By default, we have auto-resolving integration runtime. So we click over it, we can see in the settings, the name, description status okay if we go to the second tab data flow runtime it shows the compute size as custom and in advance general purpose core count 4 plus 4 worker and driver cores time to live is 0 and these settings are grayed out because it is auto resolving we cannot change it close now so in case we want to create a larger debug session what we'll do we'll click on new here in the integration runtime and among these two options, we'll select on the Azure or self-hosted. We'll continue. And then it will again ask. Three options will be displayed. Then use this for running data flows, data movement, external uh, and pipeline activities in a fully managed serverless compute Azure. So we'll select the first option. Then opens the integration runtime setup page. The setup page is where we can give the name. So this is our custom integration runtime. Okay, so we'll name it as maybe larger 
cluster IR, okay, which is having the larger capacity. You can write description. It is not mandatory field. Type is a short type. Region by default is showing auto resolve. We can manually also select here. So we we'll leave it auto resolve. Then virtual network tab here. Virtual network tab helps in enabling managed virtual network. Ensures that the integration runtime compute is provisioned within it and can access data securely using private endpoints. So this is for the security purpose. So we will let it be default. We'll go to the third tab, data flow runtime. This is the tab where we set the custom cluster size. Okay, that is the compute size. So if you click on small here. And if you click on advanced, it will show you general purpose four plus four driver cores, which was there in the auto resolving integration runtime. If you select medium, it will show you eight plus eight driver cores. Okay, eight plus eight driver cores is for medium compute size. If you click on large, it will be sixteen plus sixteen driver cores for the large compute size. Let's say we want it custom. Okay, custom. Once you click, these options will be now. Shown to configure. Else, if you are selecting any of the other three options, these options are preset for these three options. Custom is we want to set. So once we click on custom, we can create our own custom cluster configuration. So it will enable the options. First option is compute type. Okay. If we click here, it will be general purpose or it can be memory optimized. So we want it to be memory optimized. Let's see, and then the core count. Okay, so what are the so what are the options available for the core count? Four plus four, which was for small. This was for medium. Then large, and let's say we want a larger core count to be thirty-two plus sixteen. Okay, we can select it from here, or here we have the more option. So these are the drop downs available. Okay, and up to Two fifty six plus sixteen driver cores options are available for the core count. Okay, then time to live. If you click on time to live, this allowed idle time for the data flow compute. It specifies how long it stays alive after completion of data flow run, if there are no other active jobs. Okay, it is available from zero minutes to four hours. We will leave it as default ten minutes for this demo. Okay, now these options are set. We can click on create. So it is getting created, successfully saved, and we can clearly see under the integration runtimes a new IR is created as larger cluster IR, which is a custom IR we have created. Okay, if we click over it, we can see the settings we have selected for this. Okay, and we can see that the status of this IR is running. Now we can go to the data factory and check in the pipeline level whether this IR is visible or not. Let's go back to the pipeline, and here we can see that we have enabled the data flow debug option. So it is already showing us enable. Let's disable it first, so it will not bear us extra cost. Let's say we have completed our task of data previewing and debug, so we can disable it. So now it is disabled. We'll go to the pipeline, and here we'll click on debug. And earlier it was just showing us auto resolving integration runtime. Now if you click on the drop down, it will show you. The newly created larger cluster IR. So it will show us the configuration of this new IR. Region compute side was custom, compute type was memory optimized. Core count we selected as thirty two plus sixteen driver cores. Debug time to live is by default one hour. Okay, so this time to live is one hour, two hour, or four hours, and we can manually stop the data flow debug session as we did shortly before. Here we have a note. Picking a custom IR will result in a cold cluster start. Means it will take some time. Allow a few minutes for the cluster to start. For the quickest debug session startup experience, select the default auto resolve IR. Okay. So auto resolving integration runtime it starts quickly because it has to create four plus four worker and driver nodes, and for the custom ones it has to create compute. Of larger size, so it will take time. So that's the note here. If we click on OK, then that particular cluster is shown here to get ready. So let's go back here. 
So in this video, we have seen how we can create custom debug session or custom IR with larger cluster size. I hope you have understood the video and you could also create your custom IRs in EDF. Thank you for watching. Happy learning. Bye.